Okay, here we go. Hopefully that you guys can hear me okay. So, due to popular demand, I, uh, I'll create this video tutorial so everyone can see exactly how I create the Matterport to video conversions. Um, and I'll also include, uh, I'll include links in the description to the different tools that I use so you guys can uh, try it yourselves with the tools, um, especially the uh, screen capture software that I use. It's gotta be the one that uh, I've played around with most. I've, I've tried different um, video screen capture software. None of them worked as well as this one, so it's pretty cool. And what else? That's right, the different sections of the video, I'll you'll be able to jump to them in the description too, right? So if you want to fast forward to something or, or go to a specific topic, you'll be able to just jump uh, to it uh, if you just check out the description. Now also I'll have um, a, uh, a link here at uh, in the description and I'll show you what it look like. You can uh, book um, your own video conversion. So say you don't want to figure out how to do it yourself, you don't have time, you can just go on the link and it's really simple. You'll just choose the size of the space. So Matterport up 2,500 square feet, up to 5,000, up to 10,000 square feet. And you select it. Uh, you can add some add-ons. So we have custom intro and outro cards for the videos. And also you can do a Google Earth or we'll create a Google Earth like swoop in from space animation that goes right to the property. So basically you just select the date that we have available here for this, press continue, and then you just fill out the information. It's, it's really simple. Um, and also, if people are interested, I can show you guys how to create one of these order forms as well for your own video. So let me know if there's interest um, by just commenting or replying. Uh, otherwise, I could even do like an hourly consult where we jump on a screen share and I'll create one for you, specific, like tailored to you. Um, anyways, let's get to it. So the first thing that I do once I upload the virtual tour is I create a highlight reel that's uh, specific to the walkthrough of the space, right? So I want to make sure that I'm going in this, I want to make sure that I'm taking the same general path uh, regardless of what property it is. So it's going to be the entrance, it's going to be usually, you know, through the dining area, the kitchen, and then go upstairs and then downstairs at the end. Uh, basically, it would just be like as if you were walking through the space or if you were guiding um, a client through the space, right? So that's the kind of highlight reel that I'm going to create. Uh, just a sec here. I noticed that there was a place 360 that I didn't do. I'm not even going to get into it, how I feel about the latest capture update, but <laughs> let's, uh, let's not get there. All right, so first thing that I like to start is with the dollhouse view. So I'll select all floors, pretend these artifacts aren't here. So this is an issue with uh, capturing using 360 to uh, 3D conversion. There's just all these issues that... Anyways, um, okay, so... What's a good dollhouse view that I like? Yeah, the front entrance. Yeah, let's do front entrance. And we'll actually have it tilted like this because then when it swoops in, it'll tilt and then go right into the entrance here. Okay. So highlight reel, add view. That'll be the first view. Do walk through and apply to all. Sometimes I'll go in and adjust the pan direction. Sometimes I won't. Like if it's really bad, I'll go in and I'll change it. Okay. So in this case, when I started at the front door, I'll probably do a view that's just outside the door here. And then you know what? We'll go right inside. All right. Let's see. Okay, let's get one where we can see the kitchen. Hopefully the software is smart enough to pan left here as we enter the living area. And we do another view there. 
We'll show the outside. Maybe, let's see if... Uh, no, you know what? We'll go back inside. Show the dining room. Family room. Anything else? Yeah, that's cool, but they don't necessarily need to feature that here. But I do want to show the stairs. And for the stairs, I'm actually going to tell it to pan left. In fact, let's do that again. Tell it to pan left. I'll remove the old one. Okay. Now, let's jump up to the second floor. I can't remember if the uh, master was here or on the other side. I think the master is on the other side. Go figure, right? I mean, this room itself looks like it should be a master. Okay, let's just jump over there quick. Okay, so when I get upstairs, I like to show the master first. Sometimes you'll show the closet, sometimes it won't. Nothing too special about that closet. Definitely want to show this. Try to hide that Matterport behind a plant. Probably wouldn't have noticed if I had mentioned anything there. And then I'll go to the bedrooms. Now, I won't show every bedroom. I'll just show the nicer ones. No, we'll just show the one on the end here. Now sometimes, do we show the bathroom? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll decide later if I want to keep it. Okay, we'll go to floor one. Didn't take me somewhere I want to be. Don't want to keep it from there. Okay. So I'll try to have the tour start from the landing of the stairs if I can, if it looks nice. But if not, then, you know, I'll pick whatever view looks really cool. All right. So we got the bar, the wet bar, theater. Definitely want to show that. In fact, this one here, I have a feeling it's going to pan the wrong way. I just have a feeling. I'm going to tell it to pan left. We'll show the pool room here, just in case. Tell it to pan left. And then here, what I like to do just at the end is, I like to feature all of the floors individually. So we'll add that view. I'll turn it slightly. Feature the next floor. If I don't like the way that it looks, then I'll just spin it around. Add that view. Then the third floor, spin it a bit, add that view, and then I like to do a final dollhouse. We'll add that view. And then end on a nice view. So that's kind of like a, a pro tip or a rule of thumb for let's say presentation centers or show homes, you always want to end the tour in a nice room. So we'll do that for the video as well. We'll end the video in a nice room. Okay, so I'll add this last view here, and then this last view can be uh, just before the outro bumper. Okay. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I'll press publish. <clears throat> and I'll refresh just to double check to make sure that it saved. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. It's spinning over. Okay, I won't watch the whole video here, but uh, you get the idea. So what I'm going to do next is do a screen recording of this. Now, 
Uh, of course, I'm screen recording right now, so I can't show you exactly what that looks like, but I will show you um, or I will explain exactly what I do to get the screen recording in the right frame uh, using uh, Snagit, which, uh, as I mentioned, I'll link to in the description. And Snagit is awesome. You can actually choose the resolution or I should say the aspect ratio and the resolution of the screen capture. So then you can do 1920 by 1080 to get it to that HD quality. And uh, just, it's what, it's what YouTube likes. It's standard HD and um, amongst other things. But uh, what I do is when I get the screen recording ready, I'll start in a new window. <clears throat> okay, I'll hide everything as much as I can, right? I do not want to capture any of these in the screen recording, okay? And also you'll notice when I was doing the, when I was doing the, um, the highlight reel capture, I made sure that all my lines, my vertical lines are vertical. And the way that I did that without changing, you know, without changing this, right? So vertical lines, vertical, you can see that, you know, this here is vertical along the sides of the screen, right? And the reason I do that is just, that's kind of rule of thumb for photography and it just looks a bit cleaner in a video, it looks more professional. Now in real estate video, generally speaking, you, you'll see different angles. Now it's not as much uh, important, but I still like to keep it sharp and keep it consistent. That I think that my videos look pretty good as a result of that. But I wanna show you here exactly how I frame the screen recording, okay? So since I already have my screen recording on, I'll show you using just snipping tool. But basically what I like to do is do it just above the collapsed highlight reel here and I'll go from the edge to the edge but I'll want the I want I'll want to leave a little bit let's say like that much I want to leave more space on the top than on the bottom because generally speaking when you're capturing with a matter port unless you're in a home like this that has like, like super high ceilings is I'll just get rid of that um, you're going to capture more of the ceiling than you are of the floor. So I'll crop the video a bit lower um, on the top down to the bottom. Now, when you have, um, when you already have the resolution of your screen recording set, you won't be able to do it like I was doing it here, where you grab, you know, like, uh, a 1920 by 1080 frame and then like know exactly what it is. The frame's gonna be the right size. Then what you'll wanna do, I'll open a new tab just so I don't adjust the frame here. But what you'll wanna do, so let's say that my frame was for whatever reason, let's say my Matterport tour. I have a Matterport tour here, no? Okay. Let's open one. Okay, so let's say that my Matterport's here, here, I'm getting ready to do the screen recording, but the window is smaller than the whole screen area. Then I'll just adjust the screen size here, so you'll be able to see in the top left corner, presented by, it's going to go up and above. And then on the bottom corner here, I'm going to stretch it so it's just out of shot. But on the left and the right side of the screens, I'm not going to go too far. I'm going to go just so it's beyond the shot and the bottom, with the top leaving enough room. And then... <clears throat> I'll exit this and we'll go back to Arlington Street. I'll press play and then I'll just do the screen recording from the start to the finish.
All right, so I have a folder for videos. Okay. So I saved the video, the screen capture there, and I just named it the same name as the address of the property. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, so I already have an intro and uh, outro bumper created. <clears throat> I just have them in the master folder, the master folder for this client. Okay, so I'm going to copy those and I'm just going to paste them into the, uh, the same project folder as for this project. Now, if you've never used Premiere Pro before, this isn't a Premiere Pro tutorial. So hopefully you have some experience anyways. I'd say it's a beginner slash intermediate um, workflow. So if you do follow along with this video and you know see what I do or just ask questions in the comments, you should be able to figure it out. But if not, there's lots of YouTube tutorials on Premiere Pro itself, but you'll get the gist of it here. And uh, I have a link to download Premiere Pro, uh, which is by Adobe. And uh, you can either download just Premiere on its own. Uh, you can download the entire Creative Cloud suite, which includes all of Adobe's software. But anyways, okay, so now that we have that, we'll go ahead and open Premiere. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll start a new project. Okay. And I'm going to title it. choose where I want to save it. So wherever you save your video files or your projects is going to be different, but I'm going to find the same folder here. And I've already created the subfolder for this specific project. So I'm going to select that folder um, on the general screen, leave everything the same. On scratch disk, you just want to go ahead and make sure it's same as project. And that way, um, if you have a dedicated um, hard drive for all of your video recording, it'll go there and it won't um, fill up your normal hard drive. Um, then I press OK. <clears throat> and then it'll open uh, a new project. It's an empty project. Okay. So as I said, this isn't a Premiere Pro tutorial, so I'll try to go slow um, so you can follow along with everything. But first that I'm, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to Make sure that my bottom left uh, sort of quadrant is, is uh, selected. And I'm going to enlarge it. And uh, the way that I toggle between full screen and small is just uh, below the escape key on the left. There's that little squiggle. <laughs> I don't even know what the name of that key is, but it's to the left of the one. Um, so you press that and it'll bring it up full screen. And I'll go to Media Browser. And I will look and I will find my uh, proper folder so I can go ahead and import. You're going to see the Premiere Pro project, which is the project that's currently open right now. And you'll see the intro and the outro bumper uh, that I have already. If you don't have, like if your client didn't send you an intro or an outro bumper uh, or um, you haven't created one for them, you'll have to create one from scratch. I won't be showing that in this tutorial though. But we do have a service that you can uh, book with us that will create an intro and an outro bumper for you. But anyways, I'm going to select all three of those and I'm going to press import. And now that's going to import all three of those into our project. All right. So now I'm going to press that squiggle button again and it's going to bring things down here. Now you can resize these windows here. So you'll see that we have the intro, the outro, and our screen capture. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the screen capture here, and it's gonna bring it up into the preview window, which is on the top left of the screen. I'm gonna enlarge that a bit. And under the preview window, you have the, uh, the timeline here, and then you have the cursor. So what I like to do, I'm going to bring this right to the beginning of where I started doing the screen recording. 
Okay. Now I could have done this in uh, Snagit. I could have cut, but I didn't. So I have to cut the beginning off here. All right, so I like to cut it off. I like to have it start just, and what I'm doing right now, I'm using the left and right arrow keys just to go frame by frame. But I like to do it just at the start of the rotation. That's where I like to start. And then I press the I key, and that um, uh, clips it and says that's the in. And then I'm going to go to the out, and I'm going to cut it. Let's see. Just before, or yeah, just before that uh, overlay appears. I'm going to press O, and that says out. Right. So now I'm going to go back to the bottom left here and I'm going to select that screen capture file and I'm going to drag it to the timeline. And you can see if I drag it up here, there's nowhere I can drag it to. But then when I go into drop media here to create sequence, you'll see that there's a little plus. That means I can actually let it go there. Okay. So now I'm going to drag this over because I don't need the source window or the preview window, I can actually go to the program window and this is where our editing gets done. So I'm going to bring this down a bit because we don't need to see that as much. We want to be able to see what we're editing. But the bottom left or the bottom right here, you can see this is the video, the video track, and this is the audio track. You can click on them, they'll highlight, you can click off and you deselect it. Okay, so I'm going to click on the audio track because there's nothing there. And I'm going to press delete. And I'm also going to press uh, the forward slash button that allows me to see the entire project from start to finish. Now, the plus and minus keys to the left of the backspace button will also zoom in and zoom out. It'll double or half the size or double or half the zoom. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do now that that's dropped in there is I'm going to bring in our intro, get rid of the audio because there's nothing, and I'm going to drag in the outro. Okay, and as you can see here, it's literally just drag to move things forward and back in the timeline. So this here is the timeline. You can see here, you know, one minute and four seconds, right? So tells you exactly where you are in the timeline. Now, the thing is, this intro and outro, they're 4K, and our video is regular HD 1080p. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to adjust the size. So before doing any of that, I go on the bottom left here, and you'll see that these all have like a little video reel and a little audio uh, waveform that means that they're clips that have both audio and video. And this up here, it looks kind of like a miniature version of the uh, editing window down here. And there's a couple different tracks. That means it's a sequence. So that's the entire sequence here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go to sequence settings and I'm going to make sure that my sequence is 29.97 frames a second. It's 1920 by 1080p. Okay, so that's 16 by 9. Uh, now, sometimes what happens, even if you set snag it to 1920 by 1080 uh, for the size of the screen capture, it's going to be like 1922 by 1081, right? So you can actually go in there and manually change it, all right, to 1920 by 1080. So once you do that, you press OK. It's going to say, are you sure you want to blah, blah, blah. You're just going to say yes anyways. So now these ones here are 1920 by 1080. But my intro and outro aren't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the intro is selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to press scale to frame size. So all of a sudden it scaled that 4K video down to the size of our current project. I'm going to do the same for the right one here. Okay, scale to frame size. Now, what I like to do, even though this is set to 1080p, sometimes there'll be little yellow 
sort of like lines at the bottom of the video once you upload it to YouTube and it just doesn't look great. So I go up to the top left, I go to effect controls, make sure that my video is selected. So the screen recording video is selected. I'll go to scale and I'll press 101. And it just zooms it a tiny, tiny bit in, make sure that there's no like black bars on the edge of your video, okay? So that's there. What I'm doing right now is I'm holding the top of this here, which is like the scrubbing bar, um, and I'm scrubbing forward and backwards in the video, right? That's how I look forward and backwards. Or I can press, uh, press space bar uh, to play or to pause, and I press the enter key to go back to the beginning. The down key will bring me forward to the um, different cut points here where clips start and end, uh, and then the up key will bring me back. Right, so there are just some quick keys that you can do. Uh, so the next thing that I do, I'll right click on the screen recording and I'm going to increase the speed by 125%. That's generally what I, I've found that works the best. Okay, so once that's done, I'll go in and I'll create the transitions. All right, so let's see here. That'll do just fine as it is. Okay, so sometimes I'll create interesting transitions between rooms here, but I think it already looks good as it is. So what I'm gonna do right about here, I'm gonna bring this down so you can see a bit better. I'm going to cut. So I'm going to press the C key and I'm going to use the razor tool. So normally I'm on this using the selection tool, which is either click selection tool or press V on the keyboard. Uh, but now I'm going to use the razor tool or C on the keyboard to cut exactly where my scrub line is. Now, if you have um, this this area here there's like it looks like a magnet you want to make sure that that magnet is enabled because that's going to snap it's like a snap to grid or snap feature so even though you don't have your cut tool exactly on the scrub line it's going to snap to that okay so that's how i cut i'm going to zoom in a bit so i can see that better and you'll see shortly why i'm cutting here so just before it starts going up the stairs that's where i cut and just as it's starting to enter the room here, just before, I'm gonna do another cut, okay? Then I'm gonna press V, select, delete, and then I'm gonna select the empty space in between, press delete, and that brings that here, okay? So now we have this, it's not like the nicest transition, but we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna zoom right in, make sure that my cursor uh, or that the scrub bar is right in between the two tracks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift, press left, and then that's going to uh, jump things five uh, frames. Then I'm going to do six, seven, eight. So I'm going to make that eight frames. I'm going to press C to get the razor tool. I'm going to cut right there. And then I'm going to press down to get me back to the center. And I'll press shift right and then one two three and I'm gonna cut there again okay so I'll, I'll add a link to these uh, now this is how I do uh, certain transitions but you can manually do it um, or you can download uh, like these preset packs so I have a preset pack I'll send a link to it but I'm gonna click this arrow here I'm gonna go to effects uh, select presets and I have PE Movement Transitions Pack. All right, so I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna choose Slide Up, Clip 1. I'm gonna make sure that I drag and drop that effect onto the first cut here, first clip. I'm gonna slide up, Clip 2, and I'm gonna make sure that I drag that to the second one. So now when we go back, press Play. Let's go back a bit further. You'll see that transition go, it's as if you're going like through the ceiling and I just think that's a really cool effect. Okay, 
So now let's see what's going on upstairs. All right, check that out. That on its own is a nice transition, so we don't got to do anything. Zoom out a bit. You can see what's going on. Cut. All right, so we're going outside here. So I'm going to, just before we start going down the stairs here, I'll zoom in a bit and I'm going to cut again. Now we're going to find where we land. Okay. And I'm going to cut it just before it lands in the bottom of the video here. Okay. We'll delete that. And now, zoom in a bit so I can see the frames. I'm going to apply the trims again. Oops. Green, okay. So again, what I did there is, so here I move up and down, up key and down key to go between um, the transitions, the start and finishes of clips. And then I press, when I'm right in between two clips that I want to do a transition between, I press shift, left, and it jumps five frames, and then I go, let go of shift, and then I just go six, seven, eight, and then I do the cuts there, right? I mean, you can also go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but that's kind of a pain in the ass. Anyways, so now I've got those. This is going to be a slide down. So we look for slide down, clip one, put it to clip one, put it to clip two. All right, let's see how that looks now. Pretty cool. Okay. So I'm just going to scrub through. See how it looks faster here. Okay. All that stuff's going to look good. All right, there we go. So at the very end here, what I like to do, as you can see when I scroll through, since the um, guided tour, the auto playback guided tour is ending, the little pucks show up. Now I don't want those in the video, so I'm gonna cut just before there. Uh, so I can either trim back by uh, pressing the V key which is the select uh, tool, and I can go to the end of a clip and just drag it back, right? Or I can just press the C key and cut right where that line is. Press V, select that, delete, and then it brings you back to here, right? So now I'm going to, if I if I take the, um, the, uh, the scrub bar here right to the end, it's gonna be a black screen. So I'm gonna press left to go over one. And there's an icon here underneath your view that looks like a little camera it says export frame and this will pop up um, you can call it end clip format JPEG browse so choose the same uh, project folder just so you keep everything organized and that's the path and then you're gonna select import into project that uh, should be default and then now you're going to go over here, you're going to select the project, and I'm going to expand this, but you'll see the end clip.jpg here. You're just going to drag and drop that here, right? So now, this way, we took a screenshot and added it to the video just so it doesn't abruptly end right there. So I just want to give it a little bit of time here, and I'm going to cut that to about there. Because now when I play back, you know, it'll hang there for a bit before we go into the outro card. Okay. So now I'm going to take the outro and I'm going to drag it right there and you'll see it's going to snap. Right. And there we go, we have a video. So the next thing I do, <clears throat> right now it's gonna be kind of boring. I'm gonna find some music. So 
uh, you don't want to just go on YouTube and download a song without having the rights to it. That is a no-no. You, so you're going to have to find some source of um, uh, royalty-free music. Uh, and there's lots of different subscriptions. Uh, you, you could probably just Google um, stock music or music for videos or whatever. But uh, the, the service that I use, it's, it's called Artlist. So artlist.io. It's $199 a year. It is so much incredibly cheaper than any other, um, any other website like this. And it has really, really, really good quality tracks. So, uh, you know, if you're making hundreds of videos a year and you're spending uh, $199, compared to let's say like licensing a video uh, one at a time, which you can do for like 50, 60 bucks, it really just adds up. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to Artlist as well if that's what you wanna do. Otherwise, what you can also do is YouTube does have some free um, uh, music that you can download that's uh, royalty free music as well. So if you just uh, look that up, you'll be able to find some tracks there. But anyways, I'm gonna go here and all right, let's let's figure something out. Let's find a theme for our video. What's our theme? I don't know, maybe something vloggy. Uh, we'll do uh, building and city. Uh, oh, let's go to mood. What's our mood? What are we feeling? All right, well, it's a pretty nice, uh, you know, luxury home. So let's see if we can have something that's like that. Uh, playful. I guess maybe sexy, luxury, sexy. And let's see, I just like the sound. I mean, this is gonna be entirely up to you or your client, but um, you know, usually the electronic stuff is pretty cool, so. Okay. I think we found a song that I dig here. So I'm just gonna add that song to the cart. Check out. Now I'm downloading the WAV file. You can download MP3 or WAV. WAV is uh, uncompressed, so it's just higher quality. Paste that into the project, into the project folder, I mean. So I mean, I can, I can drag and drop. I don't necessarily have to go into the project here. So I can just take that song and just plop it down in there. Now what I'm already seeing here is the song's not as long as a video, but that's okay, we can uh, work with that. So, let's see. So now, once we have the song selected, I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. I'm gonna see. Where the beat starts. It's right there. So what I'm gonna do, just to help me visually see, I'm gonna cut off the beginning of the song there. I know the beat starts here, and I'm gonna to go to the part of the video where this starts. All right. So when we play that back, the start of the beat begins there. Now I'm not having the song start there. I just want the drop to start there. So now I'm gonna stretch that back to the beginning. Okay, so obviously the song started a bit earlier than this, so in order for that to sound smooth, I'm gonna go to the audio clip mixer. Oh no, I'm not actually. I'm gonna go to uh, effects controls here. Um, I'm gonna scrub in maybe a second and a half into it. Maybe a second into it. Okay, I'm gonna press both of these left and right in order to add a keyframe. And 
that's going to be at full volume. I'm going to drag this to the beginning, and I'm going to take this zero and drag it all the way to the left, basically to zero volume. Okay. Now it'll fade in. Okay. There we go. So, got the video, or we got the music track here. Okay, well, let's see how it ends. Okay. Just have a look here, make sure everything's fine. Okay. So I want the outro to cut from this to the end card on the beat. So I'm going to zoom in a bit there. So I want it to do it right there. So I'm going to move the outro out a bit. I'm going to stretch that. There. And then what I do is I cut the audio at the end there. And I'll just do a bit of a fade out. So I'll go a few seconds before the end, maybe a second and a half before the end here. So again, I'm going to put the keyframes. So it starts at full volume and then will bring the volume all the way down, which is apparently minus 287.5 decibels. Who knew? And I like doing that instead of um, going into the effects and, uh, and doing a fade because I just, it, it just sounds more natural for whatever reason this way. By the way, we should be doing every couple seconds or every couple minutes is control S. Now I have, I have it set up to auto save, but it, nothing is worse than working on a video and you didn't save and it crashes and oh man, there goes everything. Okay, let's see how that ends. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's see how it is from the beginning now. Okay, that starts all right. So now to finish it off, I'm going to add some text. So we're gonna go into the graphics uh, panel here. And we're gonna go into essential graphics. We'll make that louder. And I like bold title. So actually, I'll scroll down to it here. Bold title, okay. And usually I'll put the title. All right, it's gonna say I don't have font, blah, blah, blah. I like the title to be right at the beginning there. So it appears just as this shows up, okay. So now I'm, you know, this can be whatever you want, right? Whatever your client wants, but I like to put, the address so the street address on the top and then the city bottom here I got a bit of a shadow under the text there kind of darkens the background up and you can read it a little bit more clearly okay from start to finish and see what our video looks like. Okay, and then we have the outro card. You know, there's the client's uh, logo, phone number, etc. I'm actually pretty happy with how that looks. I'm gonna save that project again. And 
So now I'm going to export. So to export the video, just go to File, Export, Media. There's a couple different ways to export it, but this is just, you know, quick and dirty. Format, I'm going to choose uh, H.264. And for the preset, I'm going to go and choose high quality 1080p HD. Now, there's a bunch of presets. You can even go YouTube 1080p HD, but, you know, it's, it's almost the same thing. High quality 1080p HD. You know, you just leave everything else the same here. Uh, all you need to do here is just click on the output name. You can choose the folder. I like to just create a folder called exports. Okay. And just uh, rename it to whatever you want to name it. Press save. You can add it to the queue, but here I'm just going to export it immediately. And then it's just going to do the export for you. All right, so it's exported. Now we can open up our folder, we'll go to exports here, and there's our video. And I'll just do a quick scrub just to make sure that there's nothing, uh, you know, obviously wrong with the video, you know, it didn't export correctly. But uh, once it's there, there you have it, the video is ready to be delivered. Um, you know, I can, I'll use either Dropbox or I'll use Google Drive depending on what the client prefers. If they have a Gmail or G Suite, you know, I'll just use uh, Google Drive. Otherwise, you know, Dropbox is, is fine, but whatever sort of file transfer program that you like, you know, just go ahead and use that. So that pretty much covers everything. Um, if I missed anything, uh, just let me know. Again, all the links to the different programs that I use to create these videos is in the description, so have a look there. And let me know if you need tutorials on anything uh, else, and I can uh, eventually create a tutorial to maybe dive deeper into Premiere or dive deeper into Acuity Scheduler um, or some of the other tools that I was using.